and the reason why I started it because we need each other. We need our networks, we need our business networks, and we have to behave better in order for those things to be healthy and functional and successful. So there you have it. Amen. You know, uh, I have to tell you guys something. So the first 15 minutes of the show didn't exactly record. So we picked it up in the middle of what Shay was saying. And so for my audience right. that yeah, that's okay. We're gonna don't worry. We're gonna be able to circle back around. I ain't too worried about. It. Uh, okay, you were well, talking. I, about, I've rehearsed all of my stuff. I understand. So now, in your role as a mediator, and now let's kind of transition uh -huh. that because I think that the same, some of the same principles at least would be applicable when talking about interpersonal relationships. One of the things that you said that struck out to me was that usually in a situation there is a point where both parties can kind of come to and agree. Oftentimes in our relationships, we don't uh, earnestly look for that point of, of, uh, of consensus or we give up before we can even get to that point of consensus. I'm talking about we give up on the relationship or what have you. I'm going to go around the room now. And we're going to come back to you, Shay, and because I think you have a very interesting perspective. Okay. Now, Chef and I have talked in before, and so this is a question to uh, Bridget and Plum Queen. Have you guys ever been in relationship, other relationships with disabled people? That's the first question. Start with you, Queen. No, I no. I've only had three um, real relationships in my life. Okay. Are you currently, I think you are currently in a relationship, but I want to ask, are you currently in a relationship? Yes, I am. And how long have you been in that relationship? Uh, September will be 14 years. September will be 14 years. Amen. Okay, Bridget. Uh, how about yourself? Have you been in a relationship with a, another disabled person of any type of disability? Um, no, I haven't. I cannot say that I have. Okay. Are you currently in a relationship? No, I'm not. Okay. And so you are you do you consider yourself dating or are no, you just kind of I don't consider myself dating. Um it's been a journey, a healing process with my leg. So I focus on myself. Other people don't tend to understand. They may feel that you're being selfish or you may not want to spend your time with them, but it's just you have other health issues. And other people don't tend to understand that. Mm -hmm. So I don't focus on dating at all. Oh, uh, do you uh, do you reject uh, men approaching you or women approaching you? Um, No, I don't. I just never have. I don't um take it further than that. I just leave it as a like um, lay the line that we're friends. It's not going to be more than that because I still have too much stuff in my daily life to, um, I guess you can say, focus on a relationship. I hear you. And you have two children. Exactly. Two children with a healing leg is not not enough time for a spouse to feel special. And you're a single and a single mother. Yeah, I dig it. Yeah. Uh, I'll let Chef now answer, even though I know the answer, but I want everybody to hear it. Okay. Have you been in um, a relationship with a disabled person? Not that I know of. Um, physically, no. Mentally, probably. <laughs> um, and uh, and no. Um, same with Brid Miss Bridget. Um, I don't really. I don't think I have the time. I don't. Well, I don't like to find the time for men. I get approached a lot, but I'm busy trying to build a career and and change lives. So I don't think dating is in the cards at this moment. But I would love to have a family in the future. Yes. Okay. All right. And I myself, I am in my third marriage. I think I might be on the tail end of my third marriage. Uh, I've been married for 15, 16 years now. And this is my longest marriage. Uh, and I have one child, a nine-year-old son. And I was married for, you know, 10 years or whatever before my amputation ever happened. And it's very interesting. 
Okay, so I'm going to start with me and then see where it branches out to. So, like, for me and my wife, I remember when I got my leg off and I was laying in the hospital that night. I mean, that morning. And I told my wife, I said, you know, listen, woman, uh, you didn't sign up to be with no half a man, no man with no one leg. You didn't sign up for that. So if you if this is something that you're not going to be able to deal with, sister, I love you. You know, I love my child. I understand it's OK. And you would have my blessing to go and and, and go and live your life. She s stood there beside the bed, holding my hand. No, nope, we're married. And I love you and I'm not going anywhere. Good. Moving on. So now we come down to this point. So now we're four years down the road here now. And my wife says that my personality changed to some degree after my amputation. Now, initially, the sex is great. You know, that, that's, that was never an issue for us in our marriage, even after amputation. And in fact, I think we got freakier a little bit after that station. I ain't gonna lie. Hey, if you got it, use it. Chef know my philosophy. If you got it, stick it somewhere. <laughs> anyway, uh, the, the issues that bring my wife and I to this point in our marriage may be related to, no, I'm not gonna say that. I think that'd be disingenuous. I will allow a certain amount of the communication that my wife and I, the, the issues in communication that my wife and I are currently experiencing are part, must be partially, must be due in some degree to my amputation. I would certainly understand and agree with that. Hmm. To what degree? I don't think it's that much really. No, I don't think that's really it. If anything, what I may have, now I was a pretty wild boy, okay? I was a pretty wild boy. And after my, and, and, but getting married, I really settled down. I was very selfish. I was very, uh, in my other two relationships, in all relationships, I'm going to be honest with you, in all my relationships with women in the past, I was very, you know, I'm a romantic. I am a romantic. So I'll be heavy, 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 heavy. But really, I've got my own shit I got to do here now. So I'm going to be real into you really a lot, you know, what they call that over loving almost, you know, because I love the beginnings of romance. The love bomb. Yeah, the love bomb. Yes. Yeah. So I can be, I'm susceptible to oh, that yeah. as an Aries male because I do everything to the most. But then I'm always focused on what I got to get done. And I think that what my wife and I have been talking about is that, since my amputation, my focus has definitely shifted. I've become much more intense about achieving certain career and professional goals and aspirations. And it's okay. I told my wife, I said, baby, it's okay. I love you. And whatever we have to do, the most important thing to me is the positive nurturing of our son. It's important to me that my son knows that his mother and father love him, that we are committed to his positive development, and that in the course of life, sometimes people must separate in order to get themselves together and to get life together. Now, I would prefer we be together as a family unit and amber our way through, but that doesn't work for everyone. And I have to be conscious of that, empathetic to that. And as she is my wife, provide her with the tools to do that. Okay. And so I didn't think I'd find myself necessarily in this situation. I was talking with another girlfriend of mine and she was saying, man, you know, every time I see you and Lady A, Mr. Q, you guys look like royalty to me. Your wife's so tall and beautiful and you the man that you are and uh, that you, I can't imagine you guys not being together because usually people would see us together. And I says, well, you know, we're always gonna be together for my boy. 
And I love my wife enough. And I, I don't usually use that word love, but I, for the sake of this dialogue, I love my wife enough because that is what we use in Western society to communicate intense emotional commitment. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I love my wife enough that it's okay if we ain't together. That's okay. And I got to find peace in that in me. I don't know if that's what's going to happen. We don't know. All right. But what I am committed to is my happiness and expressing my understanding that God loves me with or without you, honey. That's just the way it is. So that's why, Chef, I've been talking about, oh, man, I might be dating soon. My wife and I are talking about it, too. Because it says, now, what? What? You're going to be a 50 year old black woman, ain't worked in 13 years into the world again. That's your choice. I will do all that I can to nurture your development in that in that effort to a degree into a line. Everybody got, you know, lines now. So to a degree into a line. But I'm wondering, what in the hell am I going to do dating at my age? It's going to be really weird. <laughs> and I got a son to raise. That's my main priority. And I have businesses to run, you know. But I like women and I'm a sexual creature. So it going to happen. <laughs> it's just a matter of who and when. <laughs> I'm wondering what that's going to be like. And I can't wait to experience it. I'm looking forward to it. If that is what's down my path, uh, I am not yet ready to have sex or something with anyone. No, I wouldn't do that. And my wife and I, I trust in our relationship enough to where we always have had the promise. We don't have sex with nobody else unless our mates know. That's just the way it is. It's just honest. You know, that's just the way we are. I will main, and we have talked about it. We maintain that trust and honesty with one another until powers that are beyond us say that you are no longer married and husband and wife. In the meanwhile, I'm going to tell any woman that I meet that I might fancy uh, hey, I'm married. Letting you know this is where I'm at. And I'm not going to lie to people. I'm too old for that kind of shit. So <laughs> I am curious as to what the hell is going to happen. Chef, I went on that tender girl. Lord, sister, I ain't messing with them women. No, they ain't my kind of gal. <laughs> <laughs> you really went on that side? Huh? I, I don't suggest tender. Okay. You really went on I, went I don't last suggest night. tender. I do suggest. Tinder is enough. No, I, I, mean, I suggest um I suggest places like um fan base audio rooms, a lot of audio rooms, even even Facebook has audio rooms. The reason why I suggest audio rooms in opposed to a profile because the conversation allows people to stand out to you and you can connect with people think like you or uh, tend to so I like groups more so. Um I'm on fan base. I've I've met a lot of people. I'm 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 married and everything. But in terms of connecting with business partners and things in that nature, and I've found that people actually find it easier to get to know people because with Tinder, you got scammers on there. You have all types right. of mentally ill people. This way, that's what I thought. You, you can listen to what the person has to say. You thing is, is uh, on these in these audio groups, you relationships. Um, with being in a relationship with, I mean, so I've met some very interesting intellectual, like-minded people. And what happens is, is that you can inbox them anytime you want. You can, you can say, you know, I really like what you said. And, you know, you might get some, somebody inboxing you. And, and well, what site is that on? Where, where do you find together, that room? Have, well, there's two. There's uh, Clubhouse, which is getting kind of oh, saturated, Clubhouse, yeah. but I'm on uh, there. fan yeah. base. But no, but fan, fan base, fan base is black owned, and oh, fan base right. has the audio. Oh, rooms, I know the fella that owned that. I it's know that straight. fella. Yeah, I know that guy. A uh, buddy Isaac of mine. Hayes, Isaac fan Hayes, base. Yeah, Isaac Hayes' son. Isaac Hayes the third. Right there, you go. It's his son. Yeah, That's so right. He owns that. But okay. Well, he did was yes it's just, what he did was he saw that there was a lot of uh positive he saw the interaction and how powerful audio rooms are so he created his own 
uh, social media where you can do you can do uh, Instagram style, you can do Facebook style, and you can do a clubhouse wow. style. But audio group, audio rooms are excellent. That way you can right, get I'm to know that. people. Have I have made so many because uh, with Facebook they shadow ban you, right? And also, there's a lot of, um, uh, what do you call it, with Facebook jail stuff going on and all that nonsense. So I really personally, oh, yeah, if you only say the wrong thing, why yeah, yeah. I'm still on, the only reason why I'm still on fan, um, Facebook, bring people to, over to fan base. Over to like, fan base. Or whatever. I hear so, you. But I, I made dig it. I dig it. Problem. I made some you very, just, you the third time I done heard fan base today, today sister. People. Oh yeah, you need to you need to get on there. You need to support. Okay. I will. I will do it I need seven dollars because on 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 fan base, uh, whenever you post content, you get paid for it, and that's what his whole purpose was. Because uh, Facebook made a lot of money off of us, right? Mm. So he said, "Why not put the money in the pockets of the people that are actually doing the work?" We're generating. So right. I believe that's an excellent place to start. I personally suggest to leave the um, the 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 pl plenty of fish alone. Leave all of that alone, and you get to know people and how they think, and then you'll see. And and you get involved in these conversations with people, and eventually, and eventually people will gravitate to each other. To you know, each other. you get in the same. They have the same. They have the same. They have single we'll nights have single also night. on fan base. Also so if you find so which you audio room, audio room is doing up, it's doing up. You, I'm, I'm getting feedback, I'm, I'm guys. Getting feedback, I'm feedback, guys. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I've been getting so feedback. When you go to fan base, you can go to single room. You create. You can create a, uh, a audio room as well. Wow. Is that better? Is that better? No, it might be me. No. Hold on. I'm trying to see where it's coming from. Uh, let me check my um, mic. Check my mic. Hello. It's not my mic, I don't think. Uh, say something. Okay. Uh, everyone, oh, just say something. hello. Okay, I think we're all right. Hey, okay. hey. Hello. Okay, I hello? think we're all right. Yes. Yeah, so, okay. Yeah, I I think that. Um, so you say you stay know, away from the gender. You need a group on. Yeah, I don't suggest it. Maybe I've, I've had some very group. bad That might be a good idea. Up. I'm going to see if there are any amputee groups on yes, there. That, and I if there aren't, there good. will be by midnight. <laughs> I can contest any yeah. fish and tender. Yeah, spe especially, you don't especially like them. on fan base. It's a brand it's new a app. Huh? Plenty of fish and tender mm -hmm. are absolute no's. Well, you haven't dated in a long time, Plump. Oh, so I'm going to save you. I, I don't yeah, I'm going to save you I'm for like later. That. I might not have dated that's in a while, but I'm that's still, yeah, if not, I'm still, I still around, I friend. network, I hang around people, and I, when you get to my story, I'll tell you about it. Oh, 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 I hope, I hope, I was about to ask you if you're Polly, but you say the answer, because yeah. I know you were raised Polly, so maybe, okay, but we don't, don't yeah, say yeah, that. Yeah, 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 we'll get to that. Jeff, tell me, no, Bridget, no, yes. no, Bridget, no, not Bridget, not Bridget, okay. let's go to Chef. Chef. Tell me now, I Chef knows is aware of my uh, perspectives as far as getting into a new relationship and how it's going to be something. I'm I'm thinking about things that I never really had to think about before when I start to think about it because I'll just give this quick example and then Chef, I'm gonna let you roll. I never okay when I was growing up and in college, right? And I was with a girl. I was aware of like uh, dating knows, do's and don'ts. And I became aware that a woman, anytime she goes out with a man on a date, she's taking her life in her hands because she don't know that motherfucker crazy or whatever, or what, what, what. So because I was a big man, I always made sure that I had permission. Man, I'm talking about, they're going to tell you, and I was a wild boy, but any woman will tell you, I'm going to ask, can I touch your hand, darling? Can I hold your hand? I want to kiss you now. That's just the way I am. I know when I got into the city in Los Angeles, 
is when I would meet women that would say, you don't have to ask that, you know, just do it. And I'm like, mm, I ain't want nobody saying I done done nothing that you didn't want. So I always <laughs> like to confirm shit before I move on. And even if I start dating now, I'm going to be the same way, probably. Probably more so. I want. I might have to have somebody sign something. Shit. Let me know. Everybody know. I'm going into this willingly. I ain't drugged. This man ain't forced me to do shit. But at any rate, I'm now thinking, you know, I wouldn't be with no woman unless I had me a weapon beside me. I That woman might try to kill me. I ain't got my leg on. I know. And when y'all think I'm crazy for thinking that, is that just Mr. Q being old? Go ahead, Chef. No, I remember we had this conversation um, before, but no, yeah. like I think I think that's um, that's okay to think and <laughs> to be that way. As a woman, I should always think that way, and I don't, and I that agree. scares me. Personally, that scares me. Like, why aren't why aren't you thinking about protecting yourself, especially because you have one leg? Um, right. But then again, I remember I was telling you like. I'm not gonna right. I'm not gonna be with someone I don't trust or feel comfortable with in the first place. So yes. that's right. I, I think you. that's the reason why I don't think that way. But yes, um no. I think that is wise for people to to protect themselves, especially in our conditions. Like that shit is scary. And yeah, right. because I don't know <laughs> I, agree with, I agree with you when it comes to that situation. If their precautions, I mean I just I couldn't imagine it otherwise. But even if I were a if I'm a two legged woman, you know. I would think that, oh, yeah, if I'm going to have a fellow over to my house or something, you know, I know where my shit at, yo. I mean, maybe that's just my man brain and I can't overcome it. I don't know. But I suggest to women, two legs, one leg, whatever the hell you got, man, don't have no stranger in your house. Don't have no stranger in your house, man, unless you know them. I mean, you got to, I just think you got to be really careful. I don't know, man. When I was younger, man, you know, hey, man, I partied with the fucking best of them, bro. So I know about it, but I ain't never done nothing I'm ashamed of. You know what I noticed about that whole thing? I honestly, that we we go too fast. We want to jump the bones immediately. I we think so. Get all the way to the bedroom. And I honestly right. believe that that's where the danger lies. You have to take your time. I know that I've been in there. And trust me, what I've noticed is the ones that try to trust, rush you to meet you and take you out and be in your space, nine times a day, they only have one thing. They only want one thing. But when they get to know you mentally, if they take their time and say, listen, Let's have this conversation. Whenever you want to take this to get a, a cup of coffee or you want to go do a daytime thing, let's take it slow. Nine times out of ten, that might be a little bit more successful because they're trying to be your friend. They're trying to make sure you're not crazy either. So that means that, that they have something that they need to protect as well. Right. So I think there that what go. we need to do is uh, we need to self pleasure until we get ready to meet that person to be happy because what we do we be so horny our brain send us all the way to um a dangerous situation where we we wonder why we getting robbed or whatever the case is and we need to slow down i have a friend like that and she'd be like well i got needs it's dangerous you bringing them to your house it's not you know what i mean and the thing is that they, by grace of God, She's been patient, but you're looking at this beautiful picture of a man. I met a very attractive dude on picture, and when I he was fit, at least 25 old picture, balding and everything. Oh, you know 25 I mean? years so older. You gotta be careful these pictures. I know. Oh, oh, yeah. Yes. No, he was he yeah. he, he was great as 30 and he had to have been at least 60 something. Had to oh Lord. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I was I was looking for Wait. Queen, tell us your story. Tell us what you want to say. Queen, tell us what you want to say. Get into where you are, where you've been with all this. Well, I have a very eclectic perspective on relationships. As um, like I said, I grew up in a polygamous home. So I got the child's perspective from it. And I've also seen polygamous relationships that worked and I've only been in three major relationships in my life. And all of those was based off of my insecurities and, mm. you know what I'm saying? And the men, you know, seeing that and me wanting love and all of that good stuff. So me personally, 
like um, Ms. Shea said, we, we sex is too important. If we make that we that's too much of a percentage in a relationship when that is actually the most minute part. The only right. honestly ma- amazing thing about sex is honestly giving birth to children. The fact that you have the power to do that, but your relationship is much more than that. It's a connect. It's actually a connection. If you're not truly connected to a person, you're just having mindless. You're giving out your life force. You know what I'm saying? It's it's just a waste. And this is why we're not in good relationships because it's based off a physical thing instead of an emotional and a mental. You know, like how men are with um, with your friends. You got that whole bro code thing. You love your friends. Men will take a bid. Will go to jail. You know what I'm saying for their homeboys. At least you know what I'm saying in our communities when you're talking about the hood and all of that. That is the actual connection. Now you ain't having. They not having sex. They're not doing no, nothing extra. But they have a genuine. Uh, you funny. You right. In, in, in 2022, you don't know these days. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 For argument's sake, I'm talking about like I'm talking about gangs and, and things of that nature. That loyalty, that love that they have for each other. You know, their sacrifice and all of that jazz. That is a true connection. Has nothing to do with sex. You know what I'm saying? Or nothing intimate in that light. If they treated their women that way, mm-hmm. our households, you know what I'm saying, would be a whole lot better. It's about respect. We, and this is taught behavior. We are taught these things. Men are taught that they can sleep with any as many as women as they want. You're supposed to soil your royal your oats and get it all, all out there. And then they teach us you have to be chastity and you know, just pick one man and, you know, and stick with that one. If once you find them, stick with that one forever. And it's a contradiction. You got boys doing one thing, you got girls doing another, but y'all expecting them to come into a union. And that mm. doesn't make sense. Well, you know, you know, I can safely say and honestly say that I I liked having girlfriends. And I told you guys how I was a fat guy growing up and all. And I liked having pretty girlfriends. I did like pretty girls. What are called pretty. Let me say that. There you go. And it was important to me as a man or as a male to have a nice girlfriend and usually have a couple of them. Now, that's even pre-sexual uh I'm talking about a real sexual life. I'm talking about when you're a teenager. Now, I know there are a lot of teenagers that are banging their asses off. I hear that. I understand that. I just wasn't that kind of a kid, okay? But in college, okay. For me, having uh, me, uh, um, being with the women that uh, I experienced in college and young adulthood, you know, you kind of get into the world as a male, and you say, man, look at all these fucking hot women around. And then when you learn that some of them want to have sex with you, you start doing it. Now, I did come to see that that was a weakness that I was expressing. Now, I didn't see it until I was 30, 31, maybe. OK, after my first marriage. I was standing in a bar and I was in a band and I was with all these, uh, I was the only, I was the lead singer of a band and it was a rock band. And I was in the bar in Hollywood and all these white gals around me. We'd gotten off the road. We had just done the gig. I'm standing at the bar and I'm looking at all these chicks, man. Knowing I could go to bed with one of these women if I want. And I said, you know what? I feel like my energy, I could feel them pulling my energy out of me. Okay. And I said, Lord, this is my last, I have slept with my last white woman. I'm not going to sleep with another <laughs> white woman in my life. And I told my band this. Mm. And they said, what, what, what do you mean? You know, uh, Q, what do you mean? And I says, yeah, I think I ain't going to bang no white chicks for a while. And I ain't been one since because it was <laughs> taking my energy. And I says, you know what? I want to give my love and devotion to a black woman. 
Interesting. And that's when I only dated black women from that day on. Now I'd always dated black women, you know, you know, throughout my life and stuff. But I did find myself when I was in that band banging a lot of non sisters, and I ain't like that. So I changed that. Well, that's a whole that's a whole nother thing. Whole podcast. Yeah, that's a whole nother podcast. Yeah, that, yeah, that's a whole nother podcast, but. <laughs> But, but what I'm saying is about men are yeah. raised to associate certain amounts of self-esteem with the amount of sex that they have with different women. Absolutely. Okay. okay. That's just the reality of it. I didn't say that there's any truth in it, but that is a reality that we're continuing with. Well, that's human nature. Anything that you are trained to do, that's what you're going to do. And it's the norm. Like, you know, boys will be boys. You know, uh, etymology is, is, a, is a big thing as well. The things that we tell ourselves that we hear, you know, over and over again, the things that we see, you know, like for me, when I come down to relationships, I feel like everyone is a free spirit. We don't come into this, we don't come to this world to, to get into relationships. We're here to relate to everyone, to relate to people, but that's not our purpose. So like I'm, I'm in a 13 year, almost 14 year relationship and, him and I, I'm probably will never get legally married. You know what I'm saying? Because I feel like I've seen divorces. I've seen people who are in marriages that are extremely unhappy. You know what I'm saying? And not to say that I, not to say the, but the concept of marriage, I, I definitely agree with. I feel like you should be connected and committed to an individual if, as you so choose. And if you're going to do that, you should do that respectfully. And if you are, and if you and both parties, you know, only want each other and y'all can do that, then that's cool. But I also understand that things happen. And especially like now, like I lost my arm. I was with somebody when I lost my arm. We were together for a year. We were talking marriage. But because I lost my arm, he was now, you know, thinking about himself. He had, he had no structure. We didn't have any jobs at the time. We had a financial issue. That's, you know, that's a, a space that we were in. And then losing my arm was too much for him. And he went back his instincts to either sell drugs or to deal with a woman until he can get on his feet. He chose to deal with the woman to get on his feet, got married and had a kid. Yeah. See what I'm saying? Right. So most people felt like I was supposed to be upset about that and overly, you know, mad. And I wasn't because I had to focus on this. You know what I'm saying? And now 15 years later, you know, I'm awesome and he got a lot of things going on right now. Mm -hmm. It happened and it doesn't mean that he, he didn't, I'm sure he loved That's me. That's how it works. You know, he loved me and then to be quite honest, I think he still loves me. But the fact of the matter is, you know what I'm saying? Like you were saying before, you told your wife, he didn't sign up for that. He wasn't, right. for whatever reason, able. And that doesn't make him bad or nothing. No, that it's not, bad. Not, yeah. not at all. Not at all. Man. No, it's just, it's I, would, I, I would actually like to be cool with him, but... He's the, he has the mindset that he, he either wants me the way we used to be or he can't be around me kind of thing. That's the type of headspace. He's no, I understand that. that. Yeah, some people can't get over that. Um, intimacy now. Let's kind of move. That was kind of like dating. Now let's talk about intimacy. I don't know what the hell to talk about. Uh, I say, you know, so why like, intimacy? How do you okay. define it? How do you define okay. it? When I'm thinking intimacy, I'm thinking about, oh, I am thinking only about physical intimacy. I'm not nearly thinking about the emotional intimacy that must be established. Uh, no, 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 let me not say that because that's not true. Let me preface <laughs> this by saying this, okay. I was talking to my wife the other day and we were talking and I says, oh yeah, honey. I says, you know, if we weren't together and there comes a time when I want to have sex with someone else. You know, I probably just wind up paying for it rather than uh, going and meet a woman and trying to date somebody and all that. Why? Well, I see you frowning. Well, that's what I look at. Why? Sex is just a physical act for some, okay? I am much more of an emotional person. I like to have the, you know what? Unfortunately, much of my early romanticism uh, romanticism was influenced by Woody Allen uh, movies and uh, uh, William Wordsworth poetry. So I'm from that old school shit, you know, where I like love and romance and the idea that you can meet a soulmate and that, that you know, that 
life is going to have ups and downs. That, But one of the greatest gifts that we have is the opportunity to, to relate intimately with one another, to share our deepest selves with the right people. Uh, and in my case, as a heterosexual man, when I engage that way with a woman, yes, typically it has wound up with me being intimate, with us being intimate. Only a few women would I say, oh, that's my friend that I would never have sex with. I only feel that way about a few people. And that was years. That took me a long time to get to. For a long time, I didn't really believe in men and women being friends. I didn't know what that was, okay? One of my dearest, dearest friends, Naila, I love her. I love her. I adore her. She's a wonderful woman, but would never have sex with her. She's a beautiful woman, too. I know she's like, I know a lot of guys think she's really beautiful. I just don't look at her that way. We're like brother and sister, you know? And as with my wife, you know, I'm so close. We're so close. And we've been together for so long. It's really difficult for both of us to even imagine it. And we just, you know, we're holding hands uh, just this morning and we're saying it'll be all right. And I'm here for you to help in any way I can to figure this shit out, man, because I just sense that I'm entering a situation that we as a family are entering a situation that's going to be very uh, interesting in a period of wonderful growth and opportunity. And so, you know, it's it's kind of wild. The idea of establishing an emotional connection like that to another person. That's what intimacy is for me. That's going to be a very interesting journey for me. Mm-hmm. If that's how you feel, why would you, why would you want to have relations with someone that you have to pay for sex? with like oh because sex is just it would just be a release of of sexual energy it would be it would be an experience it's it's, it's an experience and i would go into it knowing this is what i am getting there's no ambivalence there's no there's no misinterpretation it's to the point and to the fact but maybe that's a guy thing or something i think think it's part of the problem it's practical it's yeah, just practical. It makes sense. No, Go to a professional for a service. I wouldn't pay for it. Sex is not, that's not what sex is, though. And this is just my, you know, my I hear you. Sex is way more than just something that you do to the least. Like, it, for me, it's it's a spiritual ritual, to, you know, to bring forth life. Like, that's not something, like, if you think about the, the animal kingdom, they have a mating season. Mm-hmm. You know, other species just don't go around willy nilly having sex all year. Only, only a few species like, have sex for a pleasure. Right. Because yeah. it's, like I said, you drain yourself. That is the closest you are to an individual. Like a man is literally, I agree. Inside. You're exchanging DNA. You know, you're exchanging energy and emotion. Like, like a woman, if she sleeps with a lot of a lot of men and allows them to, you know, to come in them, all that DNA and stuff mixes inside inside of her and stuff like that. That shit is real deep. So the fact that we just think of the sex as just some straight to the point and just this thing that that's part of the problem. Intimacy, you know what I'm saying, is an emotional thing. And honestly, you shouldn't be having the physical act if you don't have get the emotional fact to it. This is how people get hurt. This is how you have generational curses and people, you know, breathe that into their children and take that with them into their other relationships. Like if I if me and my if me and my man were to, to break up, I would have to literally detox. I could not deal with another man because I still have his energy all over and inside of me because we've been dealing with each other for so long. Right. Well, I will bring that's why a lot of relationships keep, you know, keep failing because you're bringing that baggage and we think it's just problems, but it's also energy that you're bringing into a situation and you're passing that along. So I think we need to change that whole, it's just the wham, bam, thank you, man. Yes, most men think that way, but we need to change that because that's where these problems are coming from. Where do you stand on all this, Bridget? Um, 
As far as sex, sometimes I feel in my own relationships, I felt it was more of a chore. Like, um, I just, I, I don't know. I just don't really, that's not one of my um, top priorities in being in a relationship or even not being in a relationship. It just doesn't move me. I'm not, it doesn't. Now that's interesting choice of words. Chore. Why, why do yeah. you say that? Because I felt like at the time I still had both of my legs. So I worked full time and then I still had my small children to raise, which as a single mom. So I didn't do the whole, well, I'm going to work, come home. We go out to eat and we spend money. No, it's nothing like that. So we still come home, cook for your kids, make sure they had something to eat, make sure they did their homework, make sure they've taken showers while all that's going on, you're cleaning the kitchen, you're picking up whatever you weren't able to in the morning before you left to work. So at the end of the day, depending on how your spouse is, they may feel like a lot of men do that they've been to work, they're eight, 10, 12 hours. And when they come home, they, they clocked out of everything. They're, they take a shower, they're waiting for dinner, whatever is again, my experiences. So I would feel that I would do all of this while you came home the same hours I did, but now you're resting. I'm doing this, this, and that. And at the end of the day, you're like, hey, babe, are you ready for? No, I'm not ready. I'm ready to take a shower and go right the fuck to bed. That's what I'm ready for. So then that starts to cause problems with the, I don't think you love me the way I love you. Right. I right. don't think that you, it's not that at all. It's just that sex is not at the top of the list. So, and it may be at the top of your list. So therefore we right. can make this work. That's so why I'm we have to. Being alone. I know that, I know that for a fact, I am better off being alone. Now that's when we kind of look at what sister Shay was saying earlier about meaty, finding that middle ground, I think, because that's, I think a valid thing. And that could be something that a lot of, uh, limb loss people deal with in their relationship. Maybe their partner, partner's sexual thing is just as vibrant, maybe, you know, as it was or whatever. And the amputee person's maybe drains off or maybe it's vice versa. I know for me, I think I was a little vice versa. I couldn't wait to get back in the saddle and see how this new body of mine worked. That's just the way we are. My wife and I, that's the way we are, man. You know, we, we were looking like in the hospital. Okay, doc, how long? No, you can, you know, as soon as your legs heal, you can rock and roll, man. We're ready to roll, baby. Let's roll. Can you close those curtains? You know, you know, uh, but we're really, we're really, you know, attracted to one another in that way. You know, for many years, we were just really into each other that way. And I don't know, man. You know, I've heard about them people, and uh, Queen was talking about it earlier uh, last show. If your spouse leaves you because they say it's because of your amputation, it's not the amputation, guys. It's not the amputation. There's something else mm -hmm. that's going on. There are other intimacy mm -hmm. issues that are not being talked out, I think, and communicated. Can anyone back me up on that or? Yeah, or they were using you or that, you know, it would be a lot of reasons. I agree. I agree. It have been yeah. for a very wrong reason. And now that put a monkey wrench in their plan. Now they have, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people get with folks because they want to, you know, be taken care of and they want stability. And now that you have to actually put in some work, mm -hmm. now it's a problem. And now you want to dip off. That was kind of my situation. My boyfriend, he left me after my, you know, after my arm. Because he couldn't, you know what I'm saying? That's not what he signed up for. He wasn't. I understand. He wasn't right, I understand, yeah. I try yeah. to tell people all the time to look at it that way. We we look at ourselves all the time. We think that failures or things that end, it means that you did something wrong or it's bad. But, you know, life is nothing but a cycle of beginnings and endings. Yeah, and yeah. I believe that your universe, God, or whoever it is that you pray to, you know what I'm saying, works in your favor. We make choices in life, but not every choice that we make is the right one. So if we get into something and it ends, for me, that's a clear sign that that wasn't for me. 
I thank my ancestors and I keep it moving instead of being overly upset and attached to right. what I what I want. Well, and what we I, need. I don't I don't come to or uh I instead of saying that wasn't for me, what I understand is that a new beginning is happening. And that it was for me for that time. Facts. And like uh, T.D. Jake say, life's about them seasons. And it's OK that some people's season is only long enough to produce a child that is a gift to the world. That's OK. Yeah. That is okay. It's about what you're going to do with that, that season. Did you learn from it? Did you plant seeds in your own self that are now about to sprout and take nurture. See, make sure that the time you invest in your partners. Now, see, to me, I'm getting clear on this thing here a little bit now and able to express myself. Intimacy starts with yourself. That's a fact. Oh, Amen. Yes. Oh. See, intimacy yes. don't start first with you. So if you ain't being honest with what you want and who you are, you see, I understand that some of the things I say Sometimes I see you shaking your head, yes or no, and that's all right. But I'll tell you one thing, Mr. Q ain't going to lie to you about how he feel. That's, that's who I am, and I might change. I might change, but that's how I am. That's what I think, and I don't know shit. <laughs> and I don't know shit. Don't change that. That's you a powerful know? thing. That's a powerful thing to be able to express yourself. A lot yeah, of yes. Us, our community they don't do that they're not they're not allowed you, you guys and i don't mind right i tell brothers I talk know. man talk that shit out but pray about it first don't sound like no damn fool <laughs> yeah yeah make sure you don't pray on it and, and then sought guidance from within and from god within before you start blabbing it on mm -hmm. out you know uh okay sex intimacy and dating okay we kind of covered that now, I want to talk about something else real quick, y'all. Ladies, we've been on this line for 46 minutes. I can't believe it. That's not even including the 15 minutes we talked about. I was about to say actually an hour. <laughs> We're talkers, guys. We're talkers of Benisma. Okay, here you go. Lord. <laughs> so now, I got on the Facebook today, and I put up a picture of a black woman and a white man getting married. I'd been listening. Uh, one of the sisters here in the community said, Mr. Q, what do you think about Biden putting up the black woman for the Supreme Court? I said, I love it. I think that's great. Awesome. I really don't care. It's cool. I just want to see a sister up there. That'd be great. And then they said, oh, what do you think about the nominees? And then I saw my ignorance. I didn't know who the nominees were. So I went to Wikipedia and I said, who are the nominees that Biden is pretending to be the uh, superior court for black women that he said he promised people he would do? And I looked at every single one of them sisters names and most of them are married to non-black American men. And those that aren't married, they're either married to non-black men or they're not married. Okay, that's the dynamic. Literally, please, I will send the link. I'll put the link in the chat. When you look up each of them women's names and then you Google them up, because I took the time to do it. <laughs> and I said, well, now that's interesting to me. And so I wrote on the Facebook, I said, well, you know, I understand. And then I guess, you know, I'm the kind of guy that says to each his own. You'd love who the hell you want to love. Be what you want to be. That's fine. But I say now, I'm a, don't ignore that getting married in America is a political and social economic statement. Okay, they said, Mr. Q, how you gonna say you gonna how you gonna judge these women and say and dismiss the education, the brilliance that they have? I said, oh, I ain't dismissing nothing. That's wonderful. I said, I still though prefer, and I says, I think y'all might be surprised how many black American, foundational black American men hold the feeling that I do, that mm, I ain't gonna trust a sister too much, she with no white boy. And I can like her just fine and will support that sister professionally and what she wanna do even. But as far as the Supreme Court goes and talking about, I'm gonna do give black people some, this favor 
by putting this black woman up here. Well, I said, now, y'all fell for this first time, didn't you? They said, what you say about that, Mr. Q? I says, well, when Biden, when Biden came out and said, I'm going to have me this black woman pre vice president, we said, bully for you, brother. Go for it, Uncle Joe. <laughs> Go for it. Now, who he choose? Hmm. How y'all feel about her now? Married to a white man, had a political record of incarcerating black men at an over alarming rate. Now, I ain't saying she's no bad sister. I don't know. I'm just saying, let them look at the record. Now, far be it for me to suppose that these esteemed sisters have some type of bias against black men. But I'd be certain that they didn't if they were maybe married to a black man. People say I'm wrong. And I said, you know what I think, y'all? I think that y'all, and these are all white folks who commenting. Only one brother was commenting on it. All white people in my community here, Chef. Mr. Q, that ain't right. Who are you to judge? I said, I ain't judge nobody. I said, but see, y'all always get upset when a black person and a black man, and I'm known for this in this community, doesn't agree with you. You see, you're used to a different kind of brother than I am. I don't want your white women. I don't want what you have. I only want the money that I am owed. We can do business. We can establish relationships that inspire our growth and that enrich us. But I am most concerned about black people. And why does that bother you so much? If you are my friend, you would say to me, I think you would say, man, whatever I can do to help black people, I'm going to do. If you're my friend, instead of why are you always trying to make me say, well, no, we all ought to get together. And, and, and why should you care who the other person married? I said, the last thing to me, black Americans need to do are make decisions that don't empower black Americans. And so I challenge, what does being married to a white man, how does that enrich black people? A sister wrote me today and she said, my dad is white. It does not take away from my blackness or my mother's blackness. I said, that is wonderful. But let me ask you this, does it add to your whiteness? Do you get, do white people say, well, you ain't like the rest of them niggas, you more white. So we're going to treat you different. I said, do you experience that? But yet and still you want me to say and believe and, and, and endorse something that I don't agree with. Instead of you saying, well, hell, man, that's the way you feel. I dig it, man. I ain't got to think that way, but that's the way you feel. Man, them white folks mad as hell at me, chef. <laughs> I want to know what y'all think. Well, to tie in into intimacy, like you said about, you know, amputees who lose their relationships because of their amputation. Things will happen in your life, you know what I'm saying, that will show you who's for you and who's not. Mm -hmm. If you want to talk about politics and all that, politics is politics. You know what I'm saying? If you're getting married in a political realm, if you're an entertainer, more than likely your marriage is based off of a business standpoint and not necessarily love and connection. So that's, that's reasonable. So that's to be honestly expected. That's reasonable. I personally don't hold stock in other people's mm -hmm. relationships. What you got going on. I agree. What you got going on. I'm not sleeping with them. That's right. <laughs> you know what I'm that's saying? your business. Yeah, right. That's, that's your business. business. You know what I'm saying? So I don't really bother with that too tough. The whole we lost one. No. Mm -hmm. if that's what you like. That's what you want to do. Go ahead and do it. You would never, you know what I'm saying? So I don't And I support your right to do it. And would fight for your right to do it, in fact. Yeah, everybody should be able to do what it is that they want to do. Now, if you want to start going about talking about DNA and all that stuff, then that that gets a little bit different, but just based off of relationships. But just based off of relationships. If you wanna if you, if you wanna dip in other pools, do your thing. You know, that's that's completely your business. Mm -hmm. 
Now, I personally, you know what I'm saying, like melanated men. I'll say that, you know what I'm saying? I, I grew up in a mo- in black neighborhood, so yeah, I've been around I, I you know, this big population. You know, I've been around different, you know, if you in the black community, you got Haitians, you got Africans, you got sure, Jamaican, sure. you know what I'm saying? So everybody got their own little, you know, difference or whatever. So that is my preference, but yeah, do what you do. What do you think, uh, Bridget? I totally agree with, she said everything that I was thinking. Mm-hmm. I totally agree with you. I don't, it doesn't involve my circle of life. Right. I, I don't care who's licking or sticking or screwing who. I don't care. When you see a couple like that, or when you see uh, those persons with the potential to be identified as black leaders, I guess, or black thought leaders, black uh, prominent figures in the zeitgeist of black America, though, does it affect your opinions about that sister? Like if you see that black woman and you say she's married to a white guy and they want her to be on the superior court, you don't have a thought about that? Or is that okay with you? What, what? You don't, that doesn't sway your thoughts on her or something. You know what I mean? I don't I don't deal with politics too much and most people really don't like to deal with politics because you know it's very controversial and people are real serious about that. You might as well be talking about somebody mama when you're talking about, you know, you know, their politics. Yeah, yeah. yeah I hear you. Some people are very defensive about it. My, my my thing is everybody's journey is their journey. And I can't knock nobody, honestly, for doing what they feel that they need to do to achieve what it is that they're trying to achieve. Politics is a like I don't do politics. Like you, you. I've said this on you know the other yeah. platforms we've been on. I'm trying to buy an island and do my own thing and live off the land and, and all that. I'm not yeah. into what folks got. You know what I'm saying? Got going on because at the end of the day, I feel like this country is not a country. It's a corporation. It's a business, and business runs the way they're supposed to. Mm. They money. Mm-hmm. And they you know, and do what they think. So that's what I feel. So I, I definitely agree with that. This is definitely a business. What What do you say about it, uh, Shay? Yeah. Yeah, I I feel like date which date who you want. Just don't blame, uh, you know, black women or black men for your reason. So it's like, oh, I don't date white women because I can't. I man, because I can't black black men are this, so I, I don't like that. And my other issue yeah. is is um when it comes to dating, when it comes to the white person, if you truly love that black person, I honestly believe that you should um also stand for um the what they need as well. Like you know, like if we get in streets, I want to see you out there marching. I want to see you out there uh, being a part of the movement as well. Because if you love that black person, then you need to love black people as well. You know, I don't want it to be just limited to that. Because sometimes people tend to fetishize, uh, mm. you know, being in um, a situation like you know, it's like a, a freak thing. But I, if you sleeping with that person, and you're married. You know, you you gotta love them and who connected to. They got a black family. They eat soul food on Thanksgiving, and they 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 got a cousin um, that's probably getting shot in the streets or being uh, profiled or whatever. So be a part of the family for real. You know what I mean? It's not all about you know the sex thing or uh, or you know I got this on my arm. It, it's it's more than the shallowness and and the vein it's about being connected with that person like you say intimacy you have to really become one with that person yeah. what do you think chef so that's that's my thing um, what do you say chef <laughs> you, you can love whoever um it is what it is as long as it's not affecting you in your household or what you got going on it shouldn't matter um, like but now said, a woman like that, her decisions, if put on the Supreme Court, does affect our household. It does affect the course of the country for the next 30 years because they're going to make decisions that directly impact the lives of black people. 
So okay. it well, matters to me like, who I'm she's sleeping, sleeping with and who she decides to build a family with. That matters to me. And I don't know if that's right or wrong. That's just where I am. That matters to me. You have to judge a woman by her actions. Just because she's sleeping with a white man doesn't mean she necessarily yeah. has the same views as a white man. She probably worked her ass off to get up yeah, there. She would have to have the same views. She would think. You never know why she got, you know, you never know her journey to the Supreme Court. Just because she got with that white man, it may, her, it may have gotten her some extra loops. But you, until she's in there and we see her actions, I feel like that shouldn't matter. Okay. Yeah. She could be a, a pawn. She could be somebody that has to, so, somebody that has to make the decision based on what they tell her. To. So it yeah. doesn't matter. Yeah, she's just a black face at the end of the day. When it comes to making decisions, a daddy in, in some place which that's going to say, "Listen, um, we need to, you know, make this." Because it, I just find it funny how when a Supreme Court judge and stations. All of a sudden, he wants to bring a black woman in there. And if she says, oh, I'm voting for mandations, um, she's getting that from someplace else. So, I mean, I, I believe she, that she, it's not yeah. really who they put in there. It's about who who, who subscribes to what they're telling you. What she agenda. has no power. That's how I feel. Right. What the agenda is. Yeah, she's a part of the agenda. She's going to agree to it. Yeah. Well, what I always find fascinating, especially in my region, when I post things like this uh, on Facebook and all, uh, no, very, only two black guys at questioned my position on the matter in that stream of posts. Only two. One gentleman, a man who I respect greatly, uh, Stephen Bates, he was a football player. Uh, star at our school, and actually, he did go on to play professionally. Uh, a good man. I mean, he's a solid brother, and he does not believe hold the uh, position that I do. He does not feel that that should be uh, something considered in the appointment of whomever of these women he appoints. Another brother, I went to his site, and he's a local brother here, and I'm looking at his site and all, and. <laughs> I ain't got nothing against you, man. You take pictures of the hell you want. And I know a lot of different folks in this town. And I says, okay, I see, brother. I uh, see your position. Let me put it that way. And I just think that a lot of people, at least in my community, man, they really don't like it when a, a black person doesn't hold the political or social perspective that they're touting. They really are offended by it. And they could not says, just tell me where I'm wrong at. I says, I do believe that in a significant number of cases of interracial relationships, there could be traces of fetidization, uh, disconnection with culture on either one's part. To me, those are sicknesses, man, that have to be dealt with. And you can't tell me, man, that you just going to sleep with someone. Y'all talking about intimacy and all and people knowing each other and stuff, right? Man, I don't know, man. That, that don't add up to me. But, hey, I'm just a me and I just got my opinions and and I don't see it no other way yet. I don't see it no other way. And I would say they asked me, so are you saying, Mr. Q, that you're less excited about the appointment if he resigns himself to this list of candidates. I says, yeah, these wouldn't be my first choices, but I will support a black woman because she's a black woman. And I will just hope that any type of laws that affect black people in this country for the next you know, generation, we will see the benefits of it for black Americans. And that, that will be demonstrated in the mandate. I said, that's what I'd hope for. But I say, yeah, I'd rather, man, I'm just tired of us saying, okay, yeah, so what they went to Princeton or Yale. I don't give a fuck, honestly, bro. Mm -hmm. I'd rather know a girl that she went to Spelman and her mom and dad worked at the post office. I know her. I know her. She know me. I might be her cousin. Kamala Harris don't know me. Or if she do, she act like she don't. 
sounds like Mr. Q, you you want something that you're more than likely are not going to get, and you're trying you, and I get it. I totally understand. Yeah, it's not going to happen that way. Yeah. Yeah. So, which is why I don't do politics. I, you know, you can't. You can't change a system that's working the that's way. Right. That's right. That's that's right. They winning. So why why they, they no benefit for them? But see, what I feel is this: it's important to point out to people that consider themselves all these progressive thinkers and all how you might want to think about some of the ideas that you hold. And I was talking to a white buddy of mine about that today. He's real, you know, real hippy dippy kind of guy and all that. And I says, man, you got a lot of racist shit in you, brother. And you don't <laughs> even know it. An actual question? Yeah. Why do you feel it's important to see that? Because that's living in truth. And Who's I want every human being to live in Who's truth. Whose truth? There is only one truth. There is only one divine creator. That truth is manifested in many ways, but there is only one truth. Well, truth honestly is a subjective thing. See how everyone sees life through their lens. What's true for you is not true for me, is not true for Chef T, is not true for Shay Her um Shay, and not true for Miss Bridget. Everyone has different truths. Now there are things that are just reality. Like it is a fact or it is a fact that we all breathe oxygen as human beings. We breathe oxygen. We get that oxygen from trees. I don't care what your creed is, where you were born, you know, or none of that. We all have that in common. But the way you see spirituality is different the way I see spirituality and she sees differently. And we all have our own truths. So you really can't, you don't get to dictate how other people see their life. If this person feels like they're not racist and they're in their world, they're not racist. See, in their life, you know, that's normal for them. Most racist people don't feel like they're racist because that's just life for them. That's how they grew up. That's how they see, you know, us or whoever. To them, that's not racist. That's, that, that's what is. So, it affects you differently. See, in your world, it's racist from your perspective. Well, That's I don't really believe in racism, honestly, but I mean, I just use term terms that <laughs> are in our zeitgeist so that people understand what I am trying to communicate. I don't really believe in racism, honestly. Well, I can dig it, but I'm just saying for, for the yeah. sake of the argument. Yeah, you know, yeah. Everyone I understand. has, you know, their reality. So you... You shouldn't really waste your energy trying to. I agree. That's what I, that's what I was that's what I was telling my buddy. That's what I was telling him. I says, yeah, you know, go and pray on it, man. It, it, it'll 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 dawn on you. I yes. says, but, true. do your uh, thing. Yeah, do your thing, man. It's cool. No, I'm talking about you. Absolutely, oh. you your truth and how you feel about things, yes. which you have no problem doing. So <laughs> absolutely doing that. But everyone else honestly has the right to do the same. So it just is what it is. You just kind of got to just you kind of just got to worry about what you got going on in your circle and make that happen. Because like right. I am one of the most sister soldier Harriet Tubman people, you know, what I'm saying in the world, I have no issues with white people. Me either. Yep. White, white people love me. And I walk around and I live in Macon, Georgia. So depending on what side of town you are and what county you in, it can be a problem. I hear you. But I walk these streets, mm -hmm. one arm and all, Afro, hips, black fists and all that, but they don't bother me because I just exude a certain energy. <laughs> I'm not bothering you. I'm over here chilling in my melanin. I ain't bothering you. You stay over there with what you got going on. So it's like, I don't invite that you know, to me. And not to say that they aren't racist people. It's not to say sure, that. Sure, I'm know, sure that there are, right. So, I just you know, never I interact. I don't. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. It don't cross my door. I don't see it. I don't. Exactly. You know. Exactly. Yeah, it never comes in my world. Mm -hmm. Not that I don't believe that people feel that way. I'm but sure they do. Go out looking for it, and you. Are it might find you, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, right, right. Yeah. You know, I was talking to one of my buddy, you know, Hollywood writer, and I was looking at one of his shows. He said, yeah, man, check out my show. You don't love it. I look at the show, and I ain't seen no black people in it. I said, brother, he ain't no brother. He's a white guy. He's a brother. I said, brother, tell me something. I want you to be honest with me now. 
It's all right, man, brother, what's up? I said, so when you're in the writer's room and you look around and you don't see no black people there, do y'all ever say, man, this shit ain't right? <laughs> do y'all ever say that? He says, I've never been in a room where that was said. I said, I thought so. Huh, interesting. I said, your script, your script demonstrates that. <laughs> it don't even come in your mind. I dig it. I dig it. I see. I ain't mad at you. I just like to call things as they are. Because I, I think like a lot of white people think well, you don't see shit. You feel, feel like you some type of way about that, though. Huh? You feel up some way about that, though. That that bothers you a bit because. Oh, it does. It does. It does. It does. It bothers me. But I say create it our own. It, I don't think I it say should create be. our own. Oh, and it, it inspires me. It inspires me to create, to do our own shit, to have our own thing. I'm going to be honest own with you. Huh? I'm gonna so be why honest do you have so much energy when, when, like when, uh, when I'm... I think too many things have gone unsaid for too long. I, I think... Um, and you if know, they never Hunter heard it, being, at least I want uh, them to know they heard it from Mr. Q. They heard it from me, so you can't say you ain't never heard it. You can't never say, oh, I ain't never know that was a thing. No, because I remember Mr. Q one time fucking said something like that. So now you can't use ignorance as your defense. Don't give them no time to be able to defend their ignorance because there's too much information out in the world. And if you really want this world to change, then you will be conscious and you will start to see reality. And I said to them, I said, ain't y'all curious how in these chats, when we get in these discussions on the uh, Facebook, how very few black men uh, disagree? They'll never say, well, man, he's totally fucking off here. I said, that don't mean anything to you, does it? That doesn't mean that, well, shit, maybe the position that I have should be considered. I ain't say you gotta say, well, man, I'm wrong. I'm telling you what I'm recognizing is that, man, a lot of people are walking around dead in their brains, thinking that they doing right. And Sister Plum, I don't know, man. I think if you think you have a way, you should share it through action. Not necessarily through words, through action, your levels of understanding. I agree with you. I just feel like there's a way to do that. Like for instance, when I, I first agree. My, when I first started my platform, I named it Amspiration TTV because I'm an amputee. But prior to that, you know, I got into consciousness when my mom changed her relationship. So at that time, I was learning about being, you know, being proud of being black, you know, you know, very pro black, this, that, there. Even as a young, even in high school, I made certain decisions based off thinking that, well, this is not black enough, so I shouldn't do this, so I'm not supposed to like this because it's not black. Oh, interesting. Okay. We'll talk about that another time. Yeah. Okay, got you. Uh, so, but now that I'm older, and I, and like I said, most of my um, earlier YouTube videos, you know, are about specific things that come to deal with the black community. But as I've grown spiritually, and not to say that I'm not here, you know what I'm saying, for my peoples and all that, because like I said, that's that's who I am. But I'm also understanding that there's different levels. Because yeah, you have the black community and all that, but we're also human beings. You know what I'm saying? And I just, I just take people for who they are, and I understand the why. If you want to go back historically on why people- I was about to say, because some people are going to argue with you on that point that we're all human beings. <laughs> I'm just but, playing with you. No, nah, you're good. But I don't, I don't take offense to how people feel. If you hate me, that's not my business. Yeah, that's your thing. Right. You see what I'm saying? I, I have no, I can't. I can't dictate what you were taught because most of this is taught behavior. When you're born, you're not born prejudiced. You're not born having feelings about other people and races and all that. That's taught. So it's like, how, why am I going to get up continuously to get upset about things that was taught to an individual? It's not honestly not a choice. You know what I'm saying? You do it now, of course, when you get older, you can change, right. you can educate yourself and all of that. But I know human beings, I'm a realist. 
And yet yeah, everything should be a certain way, but what I take things for what is. And ninety percent of people, you know what I'm saying, act the way they were taught. You know what I'm saying? Especially once they get a certain age. You know what I mean? Once you're set in your ways, you know what I'm saying, it's hard to change those things. So I don't bother with that. You just don't need to be around me. As long as you don't do anything to me personally, I don't, you know what I'm saying? You do that over there. A lot of the establishments that I walk into, I'm sure the owners of them don't like, more, more than likely don't like melanated people. You know what I'm saying? But unless I have an experience with you, I'm not going to bother. But if I do, then I'll take the extra stance. I'll give you an example. There's a restaurant out here that I used to go to. I only eat seafood as a protein, so it's really hard for me to find places to eat. So I would go there a lot, give me a drink, get my food. I came one night with um, some friends of mine, and the owner was extremely racist to us. He was very rude, very disrespectful, and at first I didn't know he was the owner. I was trying to find out who he was, but when I found out that's who he was. And he knew who you were. No, he, he didn't you? know me. Okay, no, okay, okay. No, okay. no he right. didn't know me at all. Okay. And, and all that's right. the thing. See, he didn't know. I used to come in during the daytime. Right, okay. And yeah. So me and the bartenders, we all cool. They're all white. They but know you, yeah. Good, but they know who I am. I come through, sit at the bar, talk to them, all that good stuff. But I came at night this time. So he's he doesn't know that I've, you know, been um, patronizing his business, you know what I'm saying, for the past six months on a regular basis. He, he doesn't know that. Right. He just saw me as, or me and my, yeah. my guests, who we were. So I don't go to that restaurant anymore. I can mm. be starving, stomach growling. I hear you, but you ain't going there. I'm not gonna go to that store. Did they me. ask you? Did the other people ask you? Hey, why you still come in no more? I don't see them. You don't see them. Okay, I mean, yeah, no, I mean, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, no, I dig it. Yeah, I've so never, you know, I ain't never have no experience like that, ladies. I would, tell, I would tell you the truth. If it was, I ain't never had no nothing like that. I ain't never right. said. Well, see, that's what I mean. So once in a while it happened, and so it wasn't I, even. What well, you I'm, say, Shay? What you say, Shane? Oh, I did. It wasn't even a white. Uh... Oh, I, I said I did. It wasn't a white establishment. It was actually a, um, it was a Muslim. And and if you and your head is not covered, not oh. not directly, they they will right. wait. Everybody come in there and, and leave you last. They'll put their Muslims first, and they will not even look. At you. They will not wow. acknowledge you. Wow. But it's I noticed that it, when I patronize, you have to go in there, you uh, your head okay. covered, and you got to kind of you know have a demeanor that yeah. you, you know. So that's that's a, and I don't want to say it's racist, but I I believe it's no, just like, I, I just don't like anybody yeah. uh, non-Muslim. Non well, I'll, I'll say this: <laughs> somebody's store or somebody's establishment, something like that. I feel like. If they have a certain rules, I'll, just like I'll follow it. Yeah, that's how I am too. Just like with COVID. Yeah, that's how I am. Masking, I'm not really big on the mask unless I have to. If right. I need to go into the store and I need to get something, then I'm, I'm gonna put my mask. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna do that. Right. I'm not going to just say, oh well, I have to go and I don't have to shop at your store. I don't have right. to spend my money. That's right, you. right. And yeah. I have to res and, and to me, what it is because I want. It's saying, hey, I respect you. Run your business the way you want it to run. Right. That's so yeah. That's, and I have a choice. And they might not like anybody. They they very might they very well might not like people. So that's why they have all these restricted rules. So to put it, you in a place where you don't want to shop at their store, and that's cool. Sure. Sure. Yes, but if I need something from you and I don't mind covering my head or doing I don't mind respecting other people's situations. Mm, that doesn't yeah. do anything for you know what I got going on. You know what I'm saying? Like that that's just how I see things. So I don't yeah. try really hard not to take things, you know what I'm saying, personally all the time. Because yeah. I've seen other people go through things. Like I've seen Muslims, you know, the nicest people. And they, you know what I'm saying, black people, you know, do the do most fucked up things to them because they feel like they're foreigners. Because I'm from New York. I grew up in Queens. So, like, you're Asians who, you know, in the salon, there's a lot of talk about, you know, what goes on with them and how disrespectful they are to them in our communities. But I grew up watching teenagers, you know what I'm saying, try to beat them up and, you know, run out on them after doing a whole full set and their toes and all that a hundred dollar situation and just run out 
You know what I'm saying? And try to strong arm them because they feel like I, I, yeah, I, I've never seen that kind of shit. Yeah. I, see, right. I, I grew up watching that. I hear you. I and that. these are uh black Muslims against just regular black people no, and the black people didn't like them. No, no, no. They're two types, no, they're, they're two types of Muslims. There are two types of Muslims. There's the nation of Islam, and then there's the 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 uh, or the the Okay, okay. Oh, see, I'm thinking uh, nation of Islam. I understand. Um, okay. Yeah, this, of course. This, so the na- no, the na- no, no, no. The nation of Islam, they love black people, they love black money, and they believe that you are actually if you're black, you're a Muslim, you just don't right. acknowledge it. You just you know don't I mean? right. So right. that's what I thought. Yeah. It, the Arabs that's why I was a little shocked they, when you say what well, is it all? They all okay. call them the Arabs. Yeah, we call them the Arabs. No, 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 no. Oh, okay. No. I got you. I know what you're saying. Yeah. Yes, we think that yeah, because I'm from New York. I'm from New York. So what happened is is that um, I do notice that even how they treat their women, so their women already fall in line when it comes to walking behind their man and things in that nature. So, um, you know, me going in there dressed regular at the time was, you know, something they were, they were definitely against. That. Haram. So, you That's know, called so haram. I don't want to say it's racist. It it, haram. It, yeah, it could have been. Sex. Yeah. Sexism. It could have been either sexism or just pretty much, you know, uh and we're not gonna you know your money doesn't matter here we support each other so it could be it could be a few things i didn't take it personal i just was like oh okay that's how y'all get down um let me go right. find my halal right. somewhere else so that that's was it that's it yeah ladies yeah. we've been talking for an hour and 21 <laughs> minutes and i'm gonna get ready for us to say good night and thank everyone i do have one thing i'm gonna be going away praying okay. <clears throat> about this a lot earnest and earnest over the next several days. I am like thinking about what has been said here tonight. And when you're thinking about and you're looking at other people or whatever, are you ladies of the mind that if you see somebody doing something wrong, you ladies are, this is how I'm interpreting it. If you see someone doing something that you perceive as wrong, quote unquote, are you of the mindset more that you shouldn't tell them, hey, uh, that's that that's not right, really. You might want to rethink that. Or do you feel, no, I should just let them go about their path. And if it is wrong, it will manifest itself to them. It depends. See, because I'm more of the age. I'm more of the person all the time. I, yeah, yeah, okay, I hear you. I hear you. Yeah. Yeah. Situation, I hear you. The person, your relationship. Yeah, your relationship, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, I understand that. That's and to what, what degree? And to what degree? You can't tell bro. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you you definitely can. It, it's it's really hard. So that's why I got yeah. a platform. So I talk about certain things that. I talk to my friends about, or you know, mm-hmm. even things that I've argued with my mama about. So I express myself on my platform, and you know, they can take it, leave it. They can not watch it. They can right or not watch it, right, right, or whatever. But that's how I do that because that's been one of my struggles with um, with my path. You know, finding that balance with you know telling people because yeah, if I love you and I care about you and you're in my circle, I'm a thousand percent gonna tell you if you're doing something you ain't got no business. Now, I'm not gonna talk to you like I'm your mom's and whatnot, but right no, right. You know, I'm talking to you a human being. That I yeah. love. You know what, my you I know what? Yeah. There ain't too many people I don't love. In fact, I can hardly think of anybody I don't love. <laughs> I, I, that might sound weird. No, but that's, that's how I that's feel. Not. I, there, I don't think I can't think of one person I don't love. I, I just love so many people and it expresses itself in different ways, of course. But I have a feeling of love for all peoples on the earth. I want the best for everyone. Yeah, I want the best for everyone. I do believe that the best comes in a black rapper, though. <laughs> I don't know if that's bad or not. That's how I feel. There you go. All right. Everyone plug something. How can people find you on uh on uh, social media, Shay? I'll let you go first. We'll work counterclockwise. Okay. Okay. Um 
uh, Shesties on um, Instagram. I'm on Shesties with Shay on um, Facebook. Um, um, hey, hey, Besties with Shay on YouTube. I'm also Hey Besties with Shay on Spotify. Um, you know, pretty much that. I'm working on the things, but if you follow me, you'll definitely be in the loop on on the next um, thing that I'm working on. So, but thank Say you all. I, it was a pleasure being in your space. I appreciate it. And, 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 uh, repeat it one more time for me. Repeat. I'm, I'm trying to follow you right now. Well, oh, my social media. Yeah, your IG. Oh, I'm, uh, on Instagram, I'm Shay. Steez. S. Um, and all my other links are on Shea Besties anyway. So, um, Shea Besties. Yeah, if you find and I'm going to put all this in our show DM notes, me, too, guys. Will... I'm going to put all the links in the and show notes Spotify, as well, ladies. Just um, let you know. YouTube. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. Miss Bridget. Okay, and I'll send, I'll send you everything. Oh. Thank you so much. And I'll make, I'll make sure I'll send you all back. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much. Uh, Miss Bridget. I'm sorry, I was putting in her info. Uh huh. Okay. You tell us how we can get to you. Um, I'm just Bridget Garza on oh, Facebook <laughs> and Bridget Garza 217 on Instagram. That's about it. And uh, is there anything uh, anything else you want to promote at all, Miss Garza? No, I don't have anything to promote. All right, sister. Thank sister, I so love much. having you on the show. Please come back often. And so much, guys. there's a lot that I want to talk to you about. Yes. Y'all are uh, amazing to listen to. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. How do you spell your last name, love? My mm -hmm. G A R Z A. Garza. Yes, ma'am. Bridget Garza Herrera? No, just Bridget Garza. Just Bridget Garza. Yes. All right. Uh, Sister so Queen. Guys. Yes. Well, I. you can find me on Facebook as Amp. Spire Media Houston. You can find me on IG on nine plump nine nine. You can find me on Twitter at at Amspire Media. You can find me on TikTok as Spiritual Amputee. I am launching uh, Amspire Media Network as a streaming channel on Roku TV in April. So please look out for that. Any content creators, podcasters, and anybody that would like, you know, to be on to be streaming on um, Roku, hit me up. Also, any businesses that would like to advertise their business on television as well, you can hit me up for that. Um, I'm doing a lot. You know, I, I've just been trying to get really cool with the, not really cool, but, you know, get more into the amputee community because I've kind of been living this life just as a regular person. So now I am getting more into the community. So I am developing different services, you know, to help us in all different facets, emotionally, physically, you know, so that's really what my purpose is. So I'm just finding all avenues to be able to do that. So just check me out. Amen. And I want to say just uh, quickly, I love your uh, ensemble, uh, Sister Queen, tonight. It's beautiful. I love it. It's well, nice. you said we was talking about sex and intimacy. Oh, so you, oh, you sauced it up you for know, us. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Uh, you look great, lady. You look, you. You look great. Yeah. Uh, you. Sister Chef. Um, you can find me on um, Facebook at Janae, um, Janae Edwards. You can find me on Instagram at edwards.tiana. And you can find me on Snapchat at OctoberStar190. Um, that's where I do most of my cooking and just being me. Um, I'm also like Miss Queen. Um, this is new to the ABT, um world. Um, with meeting new amputees. So this is great. Um, you can also find me here on this podcast. And yeah, yeah, that's right. Time. Every week, every Wednesday at 5.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And instead of me getting all the uh, information, just uh, follow me at heismrq.com. He is Mr. Q. You'll find everything else you need to know about me. So again, I just want to thank all you ladies uh, for joining me. And I didn't even recognize it, but next time we do this, I'm going to have a guy talking. Ooh, and I didn't even get to our trivia questions. Uh, sister, chef, I got them 2,000 Black History of Trivia questions, sister. 
Chief that bought the book. Yeah. So like, we got a whole lot of questions. And before the month is over, we're going to be doing some giveaways and a trivia. So I just got to get the people together to do it. So, you know, make a little game of it and stuff, you know, make it fun. So uh, that's it for the show. Thank you, everyone, for joining us tonight. Take care. Be good. Please feel free to write us at ample amputee podcast at gmail.com and uh, share your thoughts. And remember, this is a space where we want to hear you. All right. So uh, we'll see y'all next week. Bye. Good night. Good night, everybody. Bye. Bye, everyone. Nice meeting you. Good night. Thank you. Nice meeting you. I'll be connecting with everybody. Yeah, I'll be connecting with everybody in a little while. All right.